Hello and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure review. Today I am taking a look at the new series Doctors uh, released from Big Chief Studios. These are the one sixth scale collector's edition figures that have just been re-released uh, directly from Big Chief and from Zavi. Big Chief very kindly sent these over for me to unbox and take a look at. Uh, as you can see, I've already unboxed them, but using the power of time travel, or as we call it, editing, uh, I'm going to take you back to when these guys were still in the boxes. Like I said, you can get them from Zavi, you can get them from Big Chief, uh, but they are slightly cheaper from Big Chief Studios at the moment because they've got an awesome sale on. So if that sounds good to you, you can check that out in the link below. But for now, let's take a look at Doctors 9, 10, 11 and 12 from Big Chief Studios. Full disclosure, I have actually opened these up already. The first time I recorded this, it went wrong badly. So unfortunately, all the things have been opened and unsealed. All the plastic that was wrapped around the figures have been unsealed. All of the stands that came with the figures have been fixed. And unfortunately, I couldn't pull them apart without risking damage. So sorry about that. But this will give you at least an idea of how the figures look when you take them out of the box. So here's your shipper. We're starting off with the Ninth Doctor. Out of the box, it comes in a polythene bag to keep it protected. So let's take a look at the packaging. Packaging wise, it's uh, more of a simplified version to what we've seen before with Big Chief stuff. It's got the, well, it's not the current series style guide anymore because we've got a new logo, but it's got the Jodie Whittaker era style guide. We've got the Gallifreyan symbols. We've got her logo. We've got the blue and the yellow. So kind of what we've seen with um, other merchandise from that era. Uh, on the front we have a little hexagonal window which has a picture of the Ninth Doctor figure, the original prototype. And then on the back we have a look at the other figures in this range, uh, all colour coded and with little biographies about each Doctor. And then on the side you've got the Doctor Who logos, same on the top, and then at the bottom you have your numbered edition, and this one is 239, I think, from the looks of things. So let's open it up. Once you slide it out, the first thing to notice is that this piece at the front is actually a separate card. And on the card, you've got your picture of the prototype of the figure, and then you've got your credits uh, just listing what comes with the figure in terms of clothing, accessories, etc. So that's really cool that you've got that little window and then you can see the figure on the inside. So let's slide this out. It's on a tray and then they're in a little plastic tray like this. So you get to see the figure and all the bits and pieces. All of the doctors are packaged with this weird power stance. Um, which is quite funny. So these were all sellotaped on, but by the power of opening this set earlier, I don't need to cut all that. So here we have the figure. We'll just move the accessories out of the way. Now, when this guy came packaged originally, he did have the polythene bag on his head to keep his head protected, but he also had it wrapped around his arms and hands and also his feet, uh, because I guess those are the parts that are most likely to get any rub because they're painted. Uh, so they might rub in the box. Uh, so they're all very well protected. So we'll take the polythene off of Eccleston's head. Uh, straight out of the box, this guy doesn't need the display stand. He stands up perfectly, which is great. So he looks fantastic straight out of the box. You can see he's got his leather jacket on. This is made of a faux leather. The tailoring on this is really, really well done. The uh, lapels have been stitched down. So there's no way for the material to bunch up because I think because of the nature of this material is quite thick. Had they hadn't have done that, then the lapels would be standing up on end and it would look weird. So that's really good. Uh, and they've also put a wire frame throughout the uh, throughout the jacket as well, which means that it will fold and hang normally as it should. Otherwise, again, because it's such a thick material, it would probably be all over the place and quite uncontrollable. In terms of the head sculpt, uh, I think the head is a pretty good likeness for Christopher Eccleston, especially at certain angles, you can really see it. He's got that sort of intense glare in his eyes, but that little smirk as well gives it a lot of character. And the paint apps on the head are really strong, very realistic, the natural skin tones and the bit of five o'clock shadow, not really heavy, just a light shadow. And then all of the colors in the hair and stuff, very well done indeed. 
Moving down to the costume, obviously I've already spoken about how good the, the jacket looks and you've got all the buttons, you've got stitched in buttonholes as well. They're not functioning, but it's just to give the appearance of buttonholes. And the same on the back, you've got the straps on the back with the buttons on the cuffs as well and all the patterning. So it's really well done. You've also got working pockets as well. You've got a pocket here at the top and then another pocket down there. Those are fully functional and that's on both sides. So that's really cool. And then on the inside, you've got the golden lining, just like the real coat. And then you've got another functioning pocket on the inside, which I think is where he keeps the sonic screwdriver. And then you also have his jumper that he comes packaged in, which is the green jumper that he wears in Dalek. That's got a seam at the front to match the zip that the real jumper had. Now, this is where I bring my one and only criticism about this figure, uh, which is here around the neck. You can't see it too badly here because I've covered it up very carefully with the jumper. But when it's initially packaged, all of the join of the neck was all on display and you can see there that there's quite an obvious seam here. It just looks a little bit unsightly. Now the original figure didn't have that neck seam. They had a silicon uh, torso over the top so that was all covered and I guess because this is a sort of a, I guess a cheaper reissue if you want to call it that. I think that was one of the, probably one of the cost cutting, oh, no can't speak, one of the cost cutting measures was to remove that. Moving down to the hands Again, very good, just like with the uh, usual Big Chief figures. The painting on the hands is really well done. It looks very naturalistic, just like the skin tone on the face. And then down on the boots, these are very well sorted. All of the laces, the little metal hoops that the laces are thread through, all look very realistic. It's got a sort of leather texture and all of the seams are very well sculpted. And it even has all of the tread at the bottom of the boots, which are, you know, very realistic. They look exactly as the real boots do. So then in terms of the accessories, things that he comes with, so as I've already stated, he comes with the stand, the light up stand, which was packaged just beneath the figure. Um, if I just show you that, that's just the usual Big Chief stand that we've come to know over the years, but instead of being blue, they're in silver. And instead of having the Ninth Doctor's number in Gallifreyan text, like the original, we have the Doctor Who logo, and much like with all the other ones, it illuminates and it looks really good and it holds him very securely. Not that he really needs it because he stands up very well on his own. Um, so he comes with some other things as well. First thing, you've got the psychic paper. All of the Doctors uh, that I'm going to talk about come with the psychic paper. This is really well done as well. The sculpting on it is very realistic. It's got a real sort of leather look to it in terms of the sculpt. There's lots of detail in terms of the different seams and textures. All of the printing on the back is all sort of stamped into the sculpt where you can see the UK stuff and whatever that spiel is on the back of there. So that's really good. And he can hold that in his hand like so. What I will say is he also comes with two different hands at this point. So he's got one sort of natural posed hand and then he's got one more sort of like gripping hand. Then he has a, an open hand, you know, a Doctor Who pose hand. Uh, and then he's got more of a open pointy finger hand. And what I will say when it comes to changing the hands is that these are quite tough, uh, which is quite different to the original Big Chief figures. They, the hands were a bit more soft and very easy to swap in and out. This is quite tough. So what I would suggest is because you don't get any spare pegs like with the other figures, what I would suggest is that you uh, get a hairdryer or maybe some boiling water and you put the hands in there because the hands, they come off at the ball joint like that. So you've got the pegs still in the hand. Maybe just blast those with a hairdryer or stick them in some hot water and that will soften the plastic and you'll be able to pull the ball joint out and swap your hands as appropriate. Don't try and do it the other way because you will run the risk of snapping the peg in the hand and then you're stuffed, you can't really do anything. So that is that. And then in terms of other accessories, he's got this little ball, which is the ball that he gets from Cassandra uh, uh, in the end of the world. And that's slightly sculpted, it's sort of scalloped. So it looks like it would unfurl and the spider would come out of it. And that just sits very neatly in his open palm hand, like so. And then in terms of other accessories, well, he's got two sonic screwdrivers. You've got his original sonic screwdriver extended and then you have the unextended version as well. 
And the paint apps on these are very good. There's no bleed or anything. Everything is very neat and tidy, which is very impressive for this small scale. You've got the little button, which is painted on the emitter switch. The actual thing is cast in a transparent plastic, which means the blue on the top is kind of clear, so it looks like it's crystalline. Same for this one. This is all clear in the center as well. So these are very impressive at this small size. So you've got both of those. And then also you have a spare jumper. So this is his burgundy jumper with the V-neck cut, uh, which is the jumper that he wears the most, I think. So that is easy to swap out as well. And to do that, you just take off the hands and then just the jacket comes off easily. Uh, and you can also take off the head if you so wish. Uh, which maybe I should do that for you now, just to show you how it all works. So let's take this out of the way. So the hands are off. Jacket comes off like this. Put the jacket down. Hopefully YouTube won't censor me for the nudity of Christopher Eccleston I'm about to show you. Uh, so that comes off very easily, like so. Put that to one side. And then we just slip on the other one. Tuck the hands into the sleeves. Put the doctor's head through the hole. You can take the head off. I don't know why. I didn't. Actually, let's take the head off. The head pops off very easily. So let's take the head off. That'll make life even easier. I don't know why I didn't do that. So there we go. And that just gives you a little look at all of the articulation that's going on. There's over 30 points of articulation on all of these figures. They all use the same body. Uh, so we put this on like that. And again, just be mindful of that seam when you're doing this, because you know you want to cover that up as much as possible to make it look more naturalistic and realistic. So if we tuck that down there, lovely stuff. And then once that's on, you can put the doctor's jacket back on, like so. That slips on very easily. There we go. And then just plug in the head as it was. There we go. Oh, and then his hands, of course, because it's no good having the doctor without any hands. So there we go. Plug those in. Now, obviously, if I was doing this not on camera, I would spend more time mucking around with the jumper and trying to make it look neat and tidy as possible. He doesn't look half bad. There he is with his alternate jumper on. So that's the Ninth Doctor. Overall, I think he looks really, really good. I think having the additional jumper is great. So you've got a lot of display options there. You can display him as either from some of the earlier stories or like I said, from Dalek. And of course, with the display stand and the extra sonic screwdrivers, you've got lots of different ways to pose the figure. So that's Doctor number nine. Let's move on to Doctor number 10. As of before, we've got the shipper. We have the box in the polythene bag to keep the box safe, stuff that can get any damaged. And then just like with the other one, you've got that same hexagonal window, uh, but this time we've got the prototype of the 10th Doctor from series four in uh, a blue color. So just as before, open it up, slide out the tray. We have the card again with all of the stuff that we need to know about the costume and the accessories. And then the figure is in the tray like so. So let's take that out and have a little look at what we've got inside. So again, I have obviously played with this one already, but this is kind of how it looks when you take it out of the box initially, just minus the plastic around the hands and feet again. We'll take the plastic off his head so he's not suffocating. And there we go, that is the 10th Doctor. Now he doesn't stand up as well as Doctor number nine, straight out of the box. Um, he does with a little bit of work, but you just have to be careful of positioning his legs and feet. But out of the box, he looks great. I mean, we've got, uh, I, I must admit, this one has had a bit more work done to the costume um, before rolling the camera. 
just to try and tidy him up a little bit. So he's got his brown overcoat on, which is in a sort of a soft suede material. It, it feels quite lightweight, which I was surprised by. But what they've done is they've put a uh, wire through the bottom. So if you want to, you can pose him with the, I don't know, the wind blowing and it bellowing behind him or you know, if he's running ar around or something, you can have the coat swooshing behind him, which is cool. But the detail wise, uh, it looks really very well done. You know, you've got all of the buttons down the front on both sides. You've got pockets that are fully functional with the flaps. Around the back, you've got this split here, which looks very realistic to the real coat, the little fold there. You've got these seams down the back as well. And then you have the vent down here where you can see he's got the buttons on one side, just like the real thing. And then on the inside, you've got the blue satin lining, and then you have a working pocket at the top with that orange strip there. And you've got that on both sides, uh, which I assume is just like the real coat. Then of course, underneath, you have the famous pinstripe suit. So if we take the coat off so we can get a better look at the suit underneath, take that off and put that to one side for now and take a look at the doctor's suit. Again, this is really well done, very well tailored. It fits very nice and snug to his body. You know, it really looks like the actual silhouette of this outfit from the series, which is great. All of the uh, pockets have been stitched on. These don't work. These are stitched tight uh, and the same for the ones at the bottom as well. You have all the buttons on one side and then that one unbuttoned button on the other side, which is great. The material is uh, it was quite surprising, really, because it's sort of more synthetic, like some sort of polyester, I guess. And then that has got the pinstripes printed onto that. Uh, but it feels very lightweight and very flexible, which is good if you want to pose him running about and stuff. And on the back, he's got his little band here, which is stitched in to the jacket as well. On the cuffs, he's got little buttons. And then underneath, he has his burgundy shirt, uh, not unlike the colour of the shirt I'm wearing today, funny enough. Uh, and he's got his burgundy tie with the floral pattern on it as well. And that's been really well done in terms of how they've captured the print onto the fabric. And you can just see underneath, actually, the tie popping out. So that is tied around him like a normal tie. And then underneath, the shirt has all the actual buttons of a real shirt so it's very well done indeed and head sculpt wise you know i think it's a pretty good likeness for the 10th doctor he's a more pensive looking uh 10th doctor he's more sorrowful he's thinking about the time war and rose all the paint apps are really good he's uh very naturalistic again a little bit of a five o'clock shadow just like the 10th doctor has but nothing too strong fantastic hair the hair sculpt is absolutely amazing all of those spikes look incredible and the way that they've been painted or the washes of light and dark look very good as well and just like with the ninth doctor really that when you get this figure in the light and the light hits the eyes the glossy paint job makes the eyes sparkle and come to life we've got his converse which look great they are very well done the sculpt has all of the texture of the canvas in it and all of the texture of the rubber around the front is really really well done the laces are really well sculpted and the paint job is immaculate no bleeds or anything like that very neat and tidy across all of the stitching and uh, just like before you've got the tread underneath which is just like actual converse uh, and yeah the white has got this nice yellowish wash over the top just to make it feel like it's been lived in and well worn which looks really good too. Then onto his accessories. So obviously we have the coat, which we've talked about, but he has a few other bits and bobs. So just like with the Ninth Doctor, he comes with his display stand, which of course illuminates. He comes with his sonic screwdrivers, just the same as the Ninth Doctor's. And he has the same interchangeable hands as the Ninth Doctor as well. He also has the same psychic paper. But one thing that he has that the Ninth Doctor didn't is a pair of brainy specs and those slip on just like so now these are very very thin and very delicate so be very careful when slipping these onto his head but they do slip on very easily and when he's got them on i think he looks great it really finishes off the look love the tailoring on this one and the paint apps are very good as well. And yeah, I think the fact that he comes with so much tailoring, the coat, the suit, the shirt, the tie, uh, as well as all the accessories, he is really, really cool. Not a figure that I ever thought I'd own, but I'm very glad to be able to add it to my collection. He looks great. So that's Doctor number 10. 
Let's move on to number 11. Brown shipper, as per the other doctors. Plastic polythene bag, as per the other doctors. And then slip them out, and we have the same design of box, that hexagonal window at the front, and a look at the figure inside. Now, as I open this up and take out the card, I should just explain something. So, just like with the other ones, all of the gubbins about what the figure comes with. But what I should point out is that the head sculpt here, so this is the Series 6 version of the 11th Doctor, but the head sculpt here is not the head sculpt that you receive in the box. That is the original prototype Series 6 one that did come out. It was the first figure that Big Chief did for Doctor Who. Uh, but apparently the original moulds for that figure are now long gone. Uh, so instead they've used the Series 7 head sculpt, which honestly, I think is better, and I think you'll probably think is better too, because it does allow for some extra display options, which we'll go into in a sec. So just like the other ones, on the tray, like that. And let's take him out. Now, he does have a missing accessory here, and that is his wristwatch, which I have already put on the figure. So I'll show you that momentarily. Let's move this out of the way. So we have our 11th Doctor. Take that off his head so he doesn't suffocate. And much like with the 9th Doctor, straight out of the box, as you can see, he stands up incredibly well. The head sculpt, I think, is great. I always loved the Series 7 head when that ser initial Series 7 figure came out. Uh, and the paint apps on this are really well done. Dead bringer for Matt Smith. And the hair looks great with the little fringe at the front. That's like a, a separate piece where everything flicks out there and that's all very well painted. There's sort of like a glossy wash over the top, which makes it look like it's been gelled or quaffed. And then in terms of the tailoring, he has his tweed jacket that he wore in series six. Uh, the tweed pattern is printed onto the fabric. You've got the little elbow pads, the faux leather elbow pads all stitched in, which I love. I think that's great. It's very doctory, the elbow pads and uh, it works really well on the figure. Uh, he has different hands compared to the other Doctors. Uh, he has these sort of closed fist hands, because he does do that uh, now and again, the 11th Doctor. Uh, and talking about his wristwatch, there it is underneath his jacket. So you just pop the hand off, slide it onto the wrist, and hey presto. That's really well done as well. The sculpt is very realistic. They've added a diamante type thing over the top to make it look like a the actual glass face of a watch, which is really cool. So you can have the doctor checking his watch um, like he does in the show, he does that all the time. And then the shirt as well, that's got the checkered pattern printed onto it and he's got the buttons down the front. And of course he has his bow tie, which is just elasticated. So if you wanted to remove it to do different display options, you can. And then he also has on the inside of his jacket, you've got the brown satin on the inside with the actual functioning pocket. So you can put the sonic screwdriver in there, just like in the show. And he also has a working pocket at the front. Uh, and then these ones at the front here are just false pockets. Those are just stitched on. And of course, he's got his braces uh, that we see in the show. These are, I don't know how they're attached, but they seem incredibly delicate. So. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily think about taking those off. Uh, I mean, you could do, but you'd be braver than I. Uh, and then if you look around the back, you can see how realistic they are. The crisscross, they've got the buckle there. And these are all attached to the trousers like the real things. And then speaking of the trousers, this allows us to see some of the detail on the 11th Doctor's backside, because you can see he's got all this stitching here around the pockets. This is really interesting. I didn't think the trousers would have that like white stitching there, but I imagine that on the real trousers, the thread isn't quite as prominent, but obviously you're using full scale thread on a one six scale figure. So it probably looks a bit more uh, accentuated than it actually is in the real show. But otherwise, again, the tailoring here is very well done. Trousers are nice and slim. And then down to the boots, we have the leather boots, which again, much like with the other ones, the attention to detail is great. All of the creases and the seams are very naturalistic. You know, they look like they've been well worn. And unlike the other doctors, he doesn't have any tread on his shoes, uh, which I assume is just because his shoes don't have any tread on them. That's the 11th Doctor. He looks amazing. 
but he also comes with a wealth of accessories. So he has the same hands as the other doctors. So you've got your I'm the doctor, point at the camera, woo, hand. Then you have your open sort of pointing hand, that, which is good for him to grasp uh, different accessories with. He has his psychic paper, just like the other doctors, so that's exactly the same. He does have his sonic screwdrivers. These are his own specific ones, not like the other two. Again, much like with the other Sonics, very well painted, no paint bleeds, very neat and tidy. You've got the copper around the length of the piece, and then you've got the green emitter at the end, and then you've got the copper at the bottom, the black leather around the middle. So he also comes with uh, an extra display option, which is probably the way that I'm gonna display it. This is my favorite accessory of the whole thing, which is his fez, his famous fez, on a separate hair piece with a magnet inside. So that means you can remove the hair at the back. You just pinch it at the back here and it lifts off. Again, there's a magnet there and there is a magnet in the top of his head. And then the new fez, just slips in like so. There's a bit of hair here, a little flick. You just have to get the fez underneath and then it clicks in. Like I said, it's magnetized, so it won't come off. It's fixed and he looks great. It looks really, really good on him. I think it just adds to the look of the figure uh, and it just really sets off Matt Smith's face. He's possibly my favorite out of all of them. They've done a really, really good job with the, uh, with the, the 11th Doctor. He is uh, a very welcome addition to the collection. So last but not least, we'll move on to the 12th Doctor. And just like with the others, we have our brown shipper. We have the polythene bagged box inside. And then we have our usual little hexagonal window with a look at the figure inside. And if we slide the card out, give you a better look at the original prototype from the publicity images and all of the gubbins about what's in there and what costume pieces he comes with. And then if we slide that off, we can take a look at the figure in the tray. So let's take out the 12th Doctor. So again, just like with all the others, he would have had plastic on his hands and feet to keep everything neat and tidy and safe. Uh, much like with the other Doctors, he stands up pretty well, straight out of the box. I still think that uh, the Ninth Doctor and the Eleventh Doctor win the award for uh, the best balance straight out of the packaging. Take the plastic off his head and then we can have a closer look at the Twelfth Doctor. So he looks fantastic. I mean, he's got a great costume. That jacket is beautiful. It's sort of like a suede faux velvet. So it's really, really nice. And of course we have the red lining inside, very Pertwee-esque. We have the pocket up here, which actually works. So you can put the sonic screwdriver in there. You have his little cardigan on underneath. He's got all of the buttons running down underneath on the shirt. Uh, and of course, all down the front of his cardigan. You could probably take the coat off and straighten out the cardigan a little bit because I think it's a little bit bunched up underneath the coat, but that's just neither here nor there. Uh, he also has, you can just kind of see it, the magnet uh, on both sides. So if you so wish, you can display him with his coat closed. So that's really great. And it means you don't have a nasty popper on the front of the coat if you decide to display him with the coat open. And then of course he has his leather belt. This is really cool. It's got an actual metal buckle, which is great. And you've even got the holes actually punctured into the faux leather of the belt, which is mad attention to detail. And then he has his slim black trousers, which have pockets uh, on the back. So if you wish to put stuff in there, you can. They're all turned up at the bottom, just like with the 11th Doctors. And then you have the, I think they're Doc Martin boots, but sort of brogues on the front. And it actually has all of the patterning sculpted in. Uh, so you can see just like an actual brogue, all of that detail at the front. Again, there's a sort of a faux leather feel to it. And they have the translucent sort of jellied soles, uh, just like the real boots. And even the little tags at the back of the boot as well. Oh, and all the figures, I shouldn't have mentioned this as well as part of the costuming, all have the half socks on underneath. So uh, if you 
so desire to change the Doctor's socks, you can. Uh, and he also has the pockets on the outside of the coat as well. Uh, the head sculpt is, of course, a dead ringer for Peter Capaldi. You know, you can see he's got the intense glare going on there. And much like with the other Doctors, that glossy paint on the eyes uh, make it look very realistic. And there's a bit of a five o'clock shadow, but again, nothing too heavy, just very naturalistic. Uh, and again, very naturalistic paint apps on the hair. Very nicely sculpted. Uh, this is, of course, his Series 8 look, so the hair is much more shorter and a lot more severe compared to the big bouffon of hair like he had at the end. And he, of course, has a very particular pose, and therefore he has different hands. Uh, one hand, of course, his left hand, he's got the ring finger with the ring sculpted on. Again, the paint details here are very neat and very tidy. There's no paint bleeds, it looks great, uh, and all the nails are painted and stuff, so it looks like very, very natural and very human. And like with the other Doctors, he comes with a plethora of accessories. He has the same sonic screwdrivers as the 11th Doctor, because this is a Series 8 version, so he still has the 11th Doctor's sonics. And then in terms of other accessories, he has the psychic paper, as do all the Doctors. He has slightly different alternative hands. This one, I think, is the same as the previous Doctors, but I think it might be painted ever so slightly differently. It, yeah, it has. It's got a few sort of like liver spots and stuff on the skin because Peter Capaldi's that much older than the other Doctors. So it is aged appropriately, which is good. And of course, he has uh, a different hand for his left hand because he's obviously got the wedding ring on it. And then finally, his other accessory. So he has the TARDIS, the Siege Mode version from Flatline. And that is sculptured with all of the Gallifreyan text and symbols all around it. That's an actual relief. Uh, and then you can see it's got a sort of glittery paint job over the top uh, that can be placed with him. So that's the 12th Doctor. He looks amazing. The original figure looked great and this redone version looks fantastic as well. So that's it. That is the 1-6 scale Big Chief Collector figures that have just come out from Zavi and from Big Chief themselves. You can pick them up from either website now, but if you go to Big Chief's website, they actually have an offer on. All of these figures have been reduced and they are shipping now. So uh, if you missed out on them initially, like I did, you can pick them up. Uh, but yeah, these have been really great, good fun to unbox and share with you guys. And uh, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed the review and I'll see you all very soon. Bye bye.